let's talk about how to be selective and choose the right beta readers for your book. This is my second video in this series where I'm sharing my personal experience and process with my own first round of beta readers. As I've said before, there's so many ways to run your round of betas. I just wanted to share my personal experience in the hopes that some things that I've learned along the way might help you figure out how you want to run your round of betas. If you don't know what a beta reader is or you want to learn how to actually find them, definitely check out my first video, which I'll link below and in the cards. In this video, however, we're going to focus on how I chose and selected my beta readers, answering questions like what's a good number of beta readers to have per book? And how can I select beta readers that are a good fit for my book? To help you out with this last step, I'm actually going to show you the exact survey I sent to my potential betas to help me get to know them and pick the best betas for my book. Huge thanks to my patrons and followers on Instagram for submitting questions for this series. And if you don't want to miss the rest of the videos in this series, definitely make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell so you don't miss any of the videos as they come out. First question is, what is a good number of betas to have? And honestly, I think a lot of factors go into answering this question. More betas means more feedback. So on one hand, this means you're more likely to figure out how a larger audience will react to your book. But at the same time, more betas means more feedback, which means you have so much more data to sift through and process through. And depending on how much you have, this can be overwhelming and sometimes even paralyzing. When I've been a beta reader in the past, I think I've been one of 20 to 30 beta readers at a time. And when I went to go start my first round of betas, I thought that I would start with around that number as well. But the more I thought about it, the more I pictured trying to sift through that amount of data in the end and organizing it. And I just started getting overwhelmed. So I was like, okay, for my first round, I'm going to start with a smaller number and then I can build from there in a future round. I also had to keep in mind that not every beta reader that signs up is able to stick with you until the end and give you the feedback you need, even if they commit to it. Remember, they're doing this for free and sometimes life happens. Things come up and they need to back out. So I ended up deciding on starting with about 10 betas with the hopes that I would end up with at least five to eight by the end. When it came down to actually picking, I had a really hard time choosing. I sort of just wanted to pick everyone, but I ended up narrowing it down to 12. And during the beta process, two of them had to actually deck out pretty early on because of life happening. And one more had to stop a little closer to the end for similar reasons. So I started out with 12 and ended up with nine. As I've said before, I also plan on doing multiple rounds. So I plan to get the bigger kinks out of the story with with this smaller group and then do an additional round later on after I did some edits based on the first group. And honestly, for my very first round, I feel like I could have even been fine with like five betas in the end because now going back through the feedback from nine betas is still a little overwhelming, but we'll talk about that more in a future video. The other major thing you guys were asking was how did I actually go about selecting the individual beta readers and how did I decide that they were the right fit for my story. The short answer is I created a survey and I picked specific questions so I could figure out which betas would be most in my target audience and also how I could identify how these betas were different so I could make sure my betas represented a varying group as well. Before we get into the nitty gritty of what's actually in the survey, just to share my process a little bit, I reached out to my bigger list of interested betas, which again was 70 plus people, and I asked them if they would still be interested in beta reading. This time I included details like giving them my novel pitch, the length of my novel, how the process would work, what would be expected of them, the beta reading timeline, and a bunch of other things. Of those 70 plus people, 30 people responded saying, I can read this in this timeline, I'm still interested, everything works for me, sign me up. And I sent my survey to those people. After I got the surveys back, I put all of their answers in a spreadsheet, yes, I'm a nerd, and ordered them based on which I felt fit my criteria best. Out of that, I made one list that I felt like would be best for my first round of betas, and then I had a second list with all the people that I would wanna ask for the second round. Okay, so here are the questions I put in my survey and why I picked the questions I did. And I also wanna let you know that if you are a patron or want to become one, I'm going to actually give all of you this example survey as a Word doc so you can use it or manipulate it to however it is helpful for you. 
you. And I'm also going to include that list of expectations that I sent to my betas as well, along with any other beta resources I share in this series. Okay, so I created my survey and sent it out through surveymonkey.com. I love using them. You can only have up to 10 questions in the free version, but in my opinion, that is plenty for a beta reader request survey. The first question I asked was obviously just their name. I wanted to know what to call them. Then I asked for their age and gender, and I made it very clear that these details will help me gauge how different age groups and genders enjoy my book. So again, certain questions help me find my target audience, while others like this question also help me make sure that I could have a varied group and for example have perspectives from different ages. Then I just asked for the best email for me to contact them and also send them chapters because I was going to do that through email. I also asked have you been a beta reader for anyone else before and I asked this question because personally for my first round I wanted to have people who had beta read before because I just felt like they would sort of know the general process and it would make it easier for me again for my first time having betas to be able to communicate communicate with them and they would already sort of know the expectations. The fifth question I asked was why would you like to be my beta reader? What about my story caught your interest? So again I had sent my pitch and a bunch of details about my book and I really wanted to know what about my book was grabbing them and what made them interested in being a beta reader. And their responses really did help me figure out if they would be in my target audience. The sixth question was how much do you enjoy reading young adult fantasy books? Name a few of your favorites and again finding my target audience, young adult fantasy books, and my thought was if they named a few of their favorites and I knew that those kind of books were sort of similar to my book, then this would be a good book for them. My seventh question is a little more specific to my specific book, but I asked, do you appreciate world building in a book? Basically, my book is more like high epic fantasy-ish, and so I wanted to make sure that anybody who read my book would appreciate that, and I wouldn't be asking somebody who already hated a ton of world building to read something that I knew that they were going to hate. So I had three different options. Um, they could select I get bored or confused if the author delves too much into the world and its history. Second option was as long as the world building somehow ties into the character or plot. I love it. And the final one was I really appreciate when the book's world is rich. It makes it feel real. Give me world building. <laughs> And so basically I took people that answered with the second or third option. Number eight was what are your favorite story tropes or other things that get you excited about a book? Again, this was really telling and especially if I had certain tropes that they loved, then that beta reader got raised up on the list. This also got me excited about certain tropes I know I didn't have, but now I had some market research of what my audience really liked. So maybe in a future book or in the sequel, I could implement some of these tropes. On the flip side, I also asked, are there any tropes you can't stand or other things you can think of that turn you off to a book? And I explained this will help me gauge if there is something in my story that definitely won't work for you. And again, you're just setting your beta readers up to be the kind of people that would want to pick up your book anyway. Not every person is going to love your book, but if you don't have readers that read the kind of books that you are writing and have the kind of things that you are including, then you're going to get somebody who's going to give you feedback that is not going to be helpful for your target audience. The last question was just, do you have any questions for me or about the beta reading process, just in case I didn't explain something well enough, or they had a different question about my book that I didn't think to ask about. Full disclosure, for this round, I also picked people that I knew were writers, and this was because I knew I was going to be asking questions specifically about story structure, and I really wanted to get that solidified in this first round before opening it up to just readers in the second round. And I think someone asked me too if I had both female and male readers. And from my pool, I actually had mostly females, but I did have my husband read through the book as I was sending out to betas. I'm having my brother read it right now, but I am definitely looking for male readers for the next round. So if you are a guy and like stories about fairies and pirates and competitions and all that good kind of stuff, you can check out my books pitch on my website, but definitely reach out to me because I for sure want to include more guys in this next round. Again, if you want to get this resource as a downloadable along with all of my other 
beta reader resources I'm going to be sharing. Definitely check out my Patreon page. And when you become a patron, you actually get access to my whole archive of patron-only tools and resources, depending on what tier you join. If you have any other great ways or ideas of how you've picked beta readers in the past, definitely let us know in the comments. Let's help each other. And if you're excited about the continuation of this series, definitely give this video a like and make sure to subscribe and check out the playlist below so you don't miss any of the videos coming up. Until then, I've got a couple more writerly videos here that you can check out next and we'll see you there.